Last week, the Jewish community was finally, finally issued the necessary permits by the Israeli government to build another 31 apartments here in the city. Right here, we can see the gates into that neighborhood. Back there today, we have uh, families living in these mobile homes. Uh, and hopefully in the not too distant future, they will be removed and we will be able to start to construct a very, very large apartment building. We'll be able to bring in another 30, over 30 families. We'll be able to uh, build space for our uh, kindergartens and nursery schools, for our offices. Uh, and this is a tremendous step uh, forward. The Israeli government is finally issued more permits for us to continue to build in Hebron. This will be the first building built here since 2005. What is, uh, what's the significance of Hebron in Judaism's regard for our uh, ancient holy places? Look, Judy, the, Hebron is the first Jewish city in Israel. This is where Abraham came to live. Uh, he split most of his time between Hebron and Beersheba. Uh, and the second holiest site to the Jewish people is here in Hebron, the tomb of the patriarchs and the matriarchs. Now, th this is a, an area that has always been revered by the Jewish people. Uh, the major problem was that the tomb of the patriarchs, we call Maratha Machpelah in Hebrew, was off limits to Jews and to Christians for 700 years. Uh, in 1260, the Mamelukes conquered this area. Uh, they were uh, Muslims. In 1267, they declared that site to be a mosque, and only Muslims were allowed to pray in a mosque. And for the next 700 years, until 1967, it was totally off limits uh, to anybody who was not Muslim. Today, the fact that we're back here means that it's open to everybody who might want to come visit. It doesn't make any difference what religion they are, what color they are, what race they are, what nationality they are. Anybody and everybody can, can pray here. 